All right. Here we go. Godfrey. Yo, welcome what's back. up? What's up, Vlad? What's up, world? You know, I'm back. Check it out. No ashy lips, no nothing, baby. Everything is smooth. I don't want your comments. Always trying to talk about people in this bitch. Representing Chicago today. What's good? <laughs> Shy town. That's yes, what's sir. up. <laughs> All right. Well, shit. Let's get into it, man. Yeah. Lots to talk about. Yes, Lots sir. to talk about. Yes, sir. Well, first and foremost, whew, rest in peace, Nipsey Hussle. Yeah, man. Um, Jesus. I mean, you know, I never uh, had a chance to really listen to his music. Um, what I always saw was his interviews. I always saw his interviews. You know, he's married to Lauren London because Lauren London is just as fine as you can get. So I was like, oh, who's that guy she's with? That's how I discovered her. it was her man. I was like, who's that dude? You know, and... Um, and then when I and I would hear about his name Nipsey Hussle, but I would always confuse him with Nipsey Russell, the old school comedian Nipsey Russell. I was like, who the hell is this Nipsey Hussle dude? And then I started watching his interviews. He really is. It's really scary. He sounds like Snoop Dogg. He sounds and he kind of looks like him, but he's I think he's half Eritrean. He's Ethiopian or East African. Right. He looks mm -hmm. like, listen, when you watch him, his old interviews, he sounds like Snoop. He's like Snoop Dogg, literally. Sounds like Snoop Dogg, same mannerisms as Snoop Dogg. And when I was listening to him, I said, okay, who is this guy? And, I, and then now it made sense of how he looked. I said, he, he, looks, he looks East African. Then all the shit he was talking about, man. He was talking about good shit, man. Talking about buying property, helping the, 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 our community, educating our children. And and still keeping the the gang lifestyle. He go and he was explaining like, yo, we the gang thing is not all about it's not all about killing each other. Blah blah blah. We're about organizing and 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 changing our communities. He was talking about that shit when he was like 19, 20. 19, 20 years old. They were like, he's like, I'm about trying to buy property and real estate. And he's like, I'm not even. I'm not even. Uh, I'm not a flashy dude like that. I don't really spend my money on life. I'm trying to spend my money on buying property. That motherfucker was ahead of his shit, man. He already knew what the fuck he wanted to do, and he put his money where his mouth was. He fucking did shit. You know what I mean? There's a lot of pictures of him helping kids, buying shit. His, his he owned property. I mean, the dude was, dude was, dude was pro progressive as shit, man. You know what I mean? Very impressive. And I just heard some of his music, and he was saying shit. I thought at first, I was like, oh, it's, this might be one of those mumble rapping dudes. Oh, shit. And they were like, nah, Nipsey Hussle's talking some shit. And I was like, wow. I was very impressed. Very impressed, man. You know, I'm very impressed by his interviews. I really like his interviews because he really had a heart for, 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 for progress, you know. And you know what? Another thing, too, is a lot of gangs, man, like me coming from Chicago, and you know we're a gang-ridden city. But the disciples, the vice, all the those gangs were made to help the black community. They had breakfast programs for for underprivileged children, they had, and the government came in and really had started that whole shit, fucking up all the gang shits, fucking up. They like what they did with the Black Panthers. They they changed the gangs to they made the gangs fight amongst each other, because J. Edgar Hoover said the most the biggest threat to this country is black unity. The biggest threat to this country is a black unity. Now, this is J. Edgar Hoover, is a white gay man. A white gay man. You know, he was like, the biggest threat is black unity. We can't have the Negroes get together. We can't have it. We can't have it. We can't have the Negroes. If they get together, we're in trouble. We're in big trouble. You know he was gay, right? He was... Uh, yeah. J. Edgar actually, Hoover was um... a cross-dresser, man. He was gay as hell, so you know, you know he said it that way. Oh my God, if the niggers get together, do you know what's gonna happen? Oh my God, we cannot have them get together. We can't have it. We cannot have black unity. Have them fighting, now. Go out there, we're gonna pay a sellout Negro. He's gonna break everything up, okay? This Black Panther crap, all of that crap, this Black Power crap, I don't want it, okay? No. <laughs> you know that. And that's no different than what's happening now. You know, they get us fighting amongst each other. They have us fighting amongst each other. I don't give a fuck. Even in black Hollywood, they have us all fighting amongst each other. Everybody's fighting amongst each other, keeping us fucking dissembled. Look at the Caribbeans, the Africans, the African-Americans, all of us fighting amongst each other. One thinking they're better than the other. And me being a Nigerian dude, I'm glad I grew up in America because 
I'm going to be honest, you know, they're Africans and a lot of African Americans ask me, say, well, you're Nigerian. Why is it that Africans think they're better than African Americans, man? And it's because it's the images they show. It's the images like in Africa, they show African Americans as criminals and thugs. That's all they show. And in America, they'll show Africans, you know, butt naked and shit, you know, with no food, the whole nine. So when we meet each other, Africans be like, I am better than you. And they be like, man, fuck you, black African booty scratcher. They used to call us black African booty scratchers. And I used to be like, I never seen Africans scratching their ass just all day. You feel me? So this is the same thing. They always kept us fighting amongst each other. And it leaked into like with the gang shit. Same thing. You know what I mean? Keep them killing each other. Keep it. I mean, it's fucked up. It, and it happens in all levels of black life. Not just, not just the gangs. You feel me? Happens in all levels. I mean, and and so for some dude, I, and now they're saying there's there's all kinds of theories of what happened. You understand? Well, they they actually have they've officially, you know, put out the suspect in this murder. It was uh, a 29 year old. Was did, did, uh, is a guy named Little Something Snitch or no, not Snitch. Well, uh, Shitty Cuz. Shitty Cuz. That's okay. Listen. So I want to tell you, uh, last night I was on the train and I met this brother who is a crip, okay? And he told me about this guy. He told me that they know who did it, all right? And I was like, whoa, okay. I'm not going to say the guy's name, but, you know, in New York they have... Well, his name is Eric Holder, a.k.a. Shitty Cuz. He's a rolling 60s crip. Eric Holder, I thought it was... Eric Holder is the... Well, he used to be the attorney general, right? Well, there's, different Eric there's a different Eric Holder. So I was, and you know, Eric Holder's like, oh shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? What did I do? There's that Eric Holder. And I go, is it because, was it, a, I heard it was a long time beef thing. I don't know. Well, they had the story, the story that's coming out was that they knew each other and, you know, and by the time this video comes out, he's probably going to be captured and, you know, yeah. there's going to be more of the story. But at this time, when we're, you and I are recording this, there was some sort of argument that happened. I guess him and Nipsey knew each other, and Nipsey was calling him a snitch. And okay. I guess that he's on paperwork and was telling him that he can't really hang out in that area, in that area right. because of because of his you know alleged snitch you know snitching with the police. Right. So he left, came back with a gun. Yeah. And shot well, killed Nipsey, killed you know shot two other people, and I think he kicked Nipsey after he shot him. And uh, you know, jumped in a car with a girl and drove off. Oh, and he's oh, he's currently girl. at large. He's currently at large. You know, like I said, by the time this comes out, he'll probably be captured. You know, the whole world knows what he looks like. He's got tattoos on his neck, oh. so it's kind of hard to really even yeah. hide. But yeah, man, it's a fucked up situation. It's and it and it, and it always and, it, and you know, Ti was talking about. You know, Ti has been on some really dope uh, next level. Black progress shit, you know? And T.I. was saying, uh, there's a video of him saying, we need to stop, we leave our, we we get money and we leave our neighborhoods. And then they gentrify our shit. We keep giving our shit away. We need to stay in our neighborhoods and build from there, you know? And that's what Nipsey was doing, you see? Nipsey yeah, was- Nipsey's, uh, Nipsey's store, you know, the Marathon store was right on- Crenshaw and Slauson. Right, which I know is, exactly where that is. That, 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 that's the hood right there. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, that's like the heart the heart of yeah. it. I shot, I and, shot a couple um, of films out there. Yeah, on, the, yeah. on those streets, yeah. And, uh, I mean, it's it's sad because he was coming back. I guess, I guess he's actually owned some of the property, yeah. or if not all the property in that little yes. strip mall. And, you know, he had his store and he was hanging out there all the time. Yep. He wanted and to- he was giving back and everything yep. else like that, but... You know, damn, like, as you're doing this, you're putting yourself in an environment with people who have very little money. Yeah. Who are looking at you as a means, yeah. you know, to to elevate themselves. Yeah. And you can't you can't help everybody. Imagine, you know, and this dude here who who allegedly killed him, he was an aspiring rapper. There's like songs of his out there and well, stuff. That that's See, it's 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 all making sense because that can be. You remember the um in Biggie Smalls, the Mad Rapper. Remember the Mad Rapper? He's like, yo, 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 my shit's more jump late. You know, it's like it could be. He could have been jealous of that of his success. You know, maybe he was like, hey man, I don't know. Okay, he could have been like, yo, can you put me on? 
And, you know, he probably was mad that he didn't get put on. And that's the only problem about when when people say that's the reason. It's, it's, it's a catch-22 because you go, I, yeah, we should take a, we should stay in our own neighborhoods and, 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 and help the people there. But then when this kind of shit happens, you get discouraged and go, man, I can't do this shit. You know, because you got well, you, you got people that I mean, are getting it, jealous of you. People get yeah. jealous of you, man. People get jealous. And if, even though he's giving and trying to help people, you got cast to be like, yo, fuck that motherfucker, man. He think he better than me and shit. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, just think about it, though, right? You are a multimillionaire. And everybody knows it. Yeah. Everybody oh, knows. Everybody. You, you're worldwide. Everybody knows yeah. that you have millions and millions of dollars. Yes. Yeah. Right, not only from your music, but from your businesses. Yeah. You know, they see you in Rolls Royces. Yeah, you know, uh, all your jewelry. Yes. You know, he Nipsey may not have been talking about jewelry at nineteen twenty, but at thirty three, you know, I've yeah. seen pictures with all. You know, he's wearing like ten chains. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He has a lot of chains. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, and you're dealing with people. I mean, this guy may not have even had a car. Well, you know what I'm saying? He, he was did. probably broke as shit. Obviously, he didn't because he had gotten someone else's car. To do someone that. else's car to get away from a murder. That's Think about saying. that. You know, this is not someone who you're going to run into in Beverly Hills. No. You're not going to run into this guy in Calabasas. No. You know, he probably walked around the corner to the store. He probably lives down the street. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? You're around, as a multimillionaire, you're around people who have so little. So little, yeah. And they're not always going to love that. Well, then, You know, and so uh, that, unfortunately, that mean, you know, he, does that mean you have to help the hood from afar then. That's what it would have to be. You have yeah. to, you listen, I, I I just always think when this shit kind of shit happens, you go, well, fuck it then. You know, I'm going to have to help you from afar. I can't have this jealousy shit because we are, I mean, it's, it's sad, but people get angry at you, man. Look at hell, Jesus Christ. Jesus was trying to do things and cats was, it was hating, man. You know what I mean? And it's like when you're in that kind of environment, you know, and 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 and, uh, and another thing too is a lot of times beefs don't end, bro. They don't end. Cats be like, nah, I still want to get this dude. I still want to get this chick or whatever. You know what I mean? I I listen, man. It it was, and I didn't even know about the guy. I knew about him just through his interviews. And of course, he's that big when you hear about him. But just to what to to see that happen to him. And now people are saying, was it some government shit? Now they're saying, was there something behind that? I don't. Yeah, but but all of those I, things can that. make sense, though. Nipsey was really big on Doctor Sebi, Dr. and he was Sebi. doing a, a, a Doctor Sebi documentary. Right. And the first thing Doctor Sebi started trending. Oh, oh, Nipsey was going to do a Doctor Sebi documentary that was going to bring down the whole pharmaceutical industry, they and that's why they big killed pharma, him. Big pharma shit. Yeah. Come on, man, cut it out. You don't think it cut was big that pharma shit? Cut that shit out. I mean, big pharma don't care about no damn rappers. Yeah, big but, pharma, but, big pharma, but big pharma, but um, big pharma. It costs a billion dollars to put out like one drug. I love it when you call me big pharma. Throw the hands in the air, you don't know, care. I love it when you call me big pharma. No, but listen, on the real shit, Doctor Sebi was a natural healer. He had solutions to diseases. It's uh, real shit. I'm just uh, saying. I mean, listen, not, that's not, not you can't I'm not just. Co I'm not co-signing this, man. This guy, this guy claimed to have cured like 30 AIDS patients and like 30 cancer patients, but none of this has been proven. None of this has been, you know, there's a standard medical procedure for cures. No, listen. There, none of this exists. Listen, he claims he went to the Supreme there are, Court. You don't think there are happened. cures? You don't think there are cures for AIDS and stuff? Are you kidding me? There are people, there are tribes that naturally cure a bunch of shit. But of really? course, of course, where they at? on the Western, where are they at? If, if they, they show at? themselves, show me, they're going to get wiped out. If they show, show me themselves. someone that has cured AIDS no, consistently like you over and over you, again. You can't. Because they. you know what happens if you do that? You get in the way of business, man. Come on, man. Oh, come on. You don't think? you Because, th on. Everything is, is drugged the fuck up. You think if somebody could cure AIDS, they're going to blab themselves out there? That's why a lot of people don't. There's a lot of natural natural doctors and all that are done. They get shut down or whatever because nobody wants to, nobody wants to know that there's a cure. You got to keep the people thinking there's no cure so they can take half these drugs that make your ass leak. 
Make your eyes make one you right. blind well, in one eye, but then well, your stomach is okay, but your ass is leaking. <laughs> I mean, well, you, you hear all the side effects to the drugs. They'll be like, this will help you sleep. But watch out. You're going to shit yourself while you sleep. You're going to be in a pile of shit. Your nipples are going to bleed. But ever other than that, man, my sleep was great. It's just that I need a diaper when I sleep. Just the ass leakage is the only part. Then you take something for ass leakage. Now your dick is bleeding. What? Oh, I got dick bleeds. But, man, I can sleep now. I'm relaxed. But my dick is bleeding. I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's constant side effects. So you got to still take more drugs for those side effects. Please, if a motherfucker can cure shit naturally, and you know there are some places somewhere in Africa or South America where there's motherfuckers, those little the indigenous people eat one little fruit and all that shit is done. You know that. Okay. I know it. Okay. They well, rub a let, leaf let on your like neck this. and you fine. They don't want to know about let, that let me, shit. Let me put it like this. I know, I know like, you know, my friend Nick Cannon, he supports Dr. Sebi. And, and Nick I is going to finish it. We'll see. But- and that, that's my man, but I just disagree with him on that. Because at the end of the day, mm. right, I've had health problems myself. Like, I remember when I was, like, in my mid-20s, I had these really bad stomach problems. And I lost, like, 80 pounds. And, you know, like, okay. I was really skinny. And, okay. you know, and I was stressed out. And I was going to different doctors. And at one point, I realized it was all kind of in my head. The stress of me thinking I was sicker than I actually am was causing me this weight loss. And once I figured it out, all my weight came back and my health just returned to normal. It was very interesting, right? Okay. It was psychosomatic, now, psychosomatic shit. Yes, okay. there's definitely a connection between your brain oh, and the functions oh, of your of body. Course. Right, I got that. Okay. But there's certain things like cancer and AIDS that you're not going to positively think your way out of. No, nah, man. You you're know, wrong. once you know, like you're my wrong, dog, dude. my my Rottweiler, my Rottweiler has cancer right now in her in her toe. Like man, I can't just make her your, happy your and it'll go away. Rottweiler comparison stinks. Your Rottweiler. What the hell is that? We my don't know what it's stinking cancer. right now. The dog don't know cancer. how to go. Cancer. You, know, you think the it's dog is thing. going? Yo, I ain't gonna let this happen to me, B. I can't let this happen to me. <laughs> Can't let I gotta think positive, man. Most dogs don't be thinking on me. Psycho cement. No, you talking about your Rottweiler? Listen, listen. <laughs> cancer. If you had cancer, I don't think you'd be following Doctor Sebi shit. I think you'd if go I, to a real I hospital. I guarantee you, if I get any of that stuff, I know where I can go. Where's that? Exactly. I ain't telling you shit. I'll tell you <laughs> off this. I, I'll, 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 I'll tell you off. I'll tell you if you ever have a problem. Listen. If you ever have a problem and you're going to go to your little doctors and you talk to your Rottweiler and shit about your problem, listen, I got, I know who I can, t I, I'll, I'll, I'll introduce you to something. Okay. okay. I will all introduce, right. I'm just saying all that shit you talking with all your little doctors. And when your doctors can't find shit, I'm going to send you to something. I'm going to tell, right, I'm telling you. All right. Everybody that's watching you. this, man, you, <laughs> I'm going to send you to something. Let me know. I can't, I all listen. Right, well, not so I don't get my ass whooped. I don't know how to do anything, but I know there's something out there. You can't tell me that this planet. First of all, diseases are 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 planned, yo. I want to. Cancer is a business. I want to hear that shit. All right, they they literally change the, the molecular structure of foods and shit to fuck the body up. So I want to hear that shit. There is a counteract to it. There's a counteract to it. I want to hear it. This planet has. You can heal yourself with natural shit, but you just got to know about it, okay? I don't know. I don't know how you don't know. Ask your Rottweiler. <laughs> all right. Well, anyways, rest in peace. Re rest Nipsey in peace. Hustle. First of all, rest in peace, Nipsey Hustle. I'm gonna start. I, I'm gonna start list, really listening to this dude because what he had was a great message, and I hope a lot of people. I hope this really, really mobilizes a lot of young cats because he was about the youth. I hope it mobilizes and really it, um, influences a lot of people, our people, to really be um, positive and progressive. You know, I really I really hope so, man. He did not deserve that shit at all. At all. Yeah, man. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Well, uh, since last time you were here, yes. uh, Shadi, you know, Takashi 6 ix former manager, has pled guilty uh, to two charges, mm. to racketeering. And uh, he faces, it's either 10 or 15 years, depending on how you uh, slice it up, whether Damn. it's concurrent or not. Uh, regardless, at least a decade in prison. Fuck, man. That's a whole generation, dude. Yeah. Damn. You know what I mean? That's gonna. That sucks, dude. And you come back out, you still got your tablet. 
and we moved on. We don't have tablets anymore. Takashi snitched. Didn't he snitch in jail? Uh, Takashi's telling on everybody. He actually took the stand, I think, right before the, the shoddy thing. Damn. <laughs> he trying to get the fuck out. Oh, okay. So, so Takashi is snitching on everybody in jail, huh? Takashi has, well, we had his baby mother come in and actually read his guilty plea. The defendant's obligation under this agreement are as follows. That he shall truthfully and completely disclose all information of the activities of himself and others to the U.S. Attorney's Office. That he will... Co that he will cooperate fully with the New York City Police Department, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, Homeland Security Investigations, and other law enforcement agencies. You want me to keep going? Yeah, keep going. That he shall attend all meetings of the office, that he shall provide to the office upon request any document that shall truthfully testify before the grand jury or at any trial, that he shall bring the office's attention all crimes which he has committed, and that he shall commit no further crimes. Okay, and just and read the next uh, paragraph, and that'll be it. If the defendant does this, the office, and this is detailed on page four, on pages four and five of the agreement, agrees not to prosecute the defendant for the crimes set forth in courts in counts one through nine of superseding information as well as additional crimes that the defendant has told the government about. Damn, he's like Ray Liotta in uh, Goodfellas. He's like, him right there, him, <laughs> yup, him. He gave me the, yup, he's the one that made me wear these colored uh, dreads. Yup, he's the one. He's the one that put the six down on my face. It was him. Damn, he ain't playing. So if he tells on everybody, is he gonna get out? Um, is he gonna get out soon or what? Um, well, according to the paperwork, they were. They will not prosecute for all nine charges if he cooperates fully. Ooh, he's gonna be like this. He's gonna be on a mic karaoke style. Like I wanna tell everyone who the fuck did what. I wanna <laughs> tell you now, <laughs> cause I'm not gonna get fucked. <laughs> I'm gonna let everyone know, dude. He's going to testify. He tried to get the fuck, out. <laughs> but when he comes out. Man, that's even that's even worse. I don't know, man. This is the argument what? that we've been having with a lot of my guests. It's like when he comes out, most people feel that he'll be a, a big rap star once again. Like people are saying that it's not going to affect him really to the majority of his fans. Because you think that all the people that could be a danger to him are already in jail then maybe? Well, I mean, clearly he'll probably have a lot of security for a very long time. You know, it and Ooh, he I, could probably afford it, but he still got the majority money? of. I mean, he'll. Well, he hasn't been. In, I think people people will book him for shows. I think once he gets out. Yeah, oh, that's true. Or uh, his return. Yeah, but I don't know. I don't know how. I mean, people don't respect that snitch shit. They don't respect well, that. I don't know. I mean, if you're telling me twenty years ago when hip hop fans kind of were a smaller group of people, right. And, you know, like if if it you know if we if we all find out that Rakim was a snitch, then it'd be like, oh, no, we can't fuck with it. It's right, over. right. Like, right. you know, if, if Biggie was cooperating with the police, it's like, ah, oh, no, oh, no. yeah. But but in 2019 or 2020 or whatever, when he gets out, it's like, damn, the majority of the kids who listen to him really like. If you look at the comments when I start posting with yeah. his baby mama and everything, yeah. it was like. It's not his fault. All those guys turned against him. They wanted to kill him. They're oh. fucking his baby mama. You do the same thing. He's just a victim. It's like all these people are defending him. And I'm like, damn, like, yeah. Well, you know, think the, about it. It's the you rainbow. Know, it's the rainbow dreads, man. That shit just it's the rainbow all dreads. The colors. I mean, it unites you know. everybody. That's just, I think it, what I would do if I was Takashi, I'll just do all white concerts. Fuck that. Because you'll be safe. You ain't got to worry about dudes going to be like, hey, man, you're a snitch, bro. They're going to be like, dude, Takashi, he fucking rocks, man. It wasn't right what they did to him, man. I didn't like it. I appreciate the guy. Woo! They're going to throw a Frisbee at the motherfucker, maybe, in concert. That's all they're going to do. You know, white dudes are good at Frisbee. They'll fucking hit you from anywhere. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, if he goes to some ghetto shit, they'll be like, man, yo, fuck this snitch, man. You little, t this motherfucker, bitch at. Yo, so I would do all my shit in the suburbs. I'd be like, yo, I'm only doing concerts in the suburbs. <laughs> They'd be like, all right, man, Takashi, man. They'd just throw Frisbees at him. 
That's all. <laughs> Ultimate Frisbee. Ultimate, yo, alt frizz, bro. <laughs> Hit him with a frizz, man. Hit him with a frizz. What do you think about the whole uh, Cardi B situation? You see those videos that yeah. came out? Yo, the one where she was talking about she used to drug dudes and rob them, shit like that. Well, or or she used to, if dudes are cheating on her, she would drug them and have a transsexual come in and, I guess, <laughs> rape them. Yo, that shit's funny. I'm sorry. That shit's hilarious. Ah, uh, it's fucked up, but it's funny. But um, it's 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 kind of foul. Um, I mean, kind of. Yeah, it's foul. I mean, okay. And Thank you know, you. you know when she her videos are so funny. It's just that when she talks about it, she knows she's so honest that she might have fucked herself on this one. I'm not sure she might have because people are saying she should be taken in on charges. You know what I mean? Because look at what the Me Too movement. Look at what Cosby's in jail, and this and this is shit from 30, 40 years ago. So she might be in trouble. I mean, is there is there something pending on her? Well, there's no there's no victim. I actually had a few people DM me uh -huh. about it. Say, oh, yo, I think Cardi did this to me, and blah blah. And I'm like, well, you got proof, and oh. none of them really came. Oh, with, the, uh, the dudes are acting proof. like girls. Yo, man, shit was crazy, man. So I had a finger in my ass, right? And it was, she wasn't right. I feel uncomfortable at the time. You know, she was a stripper, man. Cardi was a stripper, so she was in that life. She said she would drug certain people, get take their money from them. But when you're dealing with a stripper, you're taking a stripper home. Come on, it's that's yeah. your fault. You in a, you a, you in a strip joint. You in a strip joint. A girl named Ecstasy Honey Bun. Fuck you think that's your fault, man. A girl named Honey Bun. You know how you know you've been to a strip joint. And be like Honey Bun to the stage. Honey Bun. Honey bun to the stage. Chocolate ecstasy, you're next. <laughs> and you in there spending money, you in the champagne room, getting the and you going like, I want to take her home. What the fuck is your problem? What the fuck you think is going to happen now that you're in the safety of your own home? That's on you. You drugged up, shaking with your pants down and a dildo in your ass like, wait, wait, she, fuck out of here. That's your fault. I I don't feel bad for people who go to strip joints, man. That's you. You're taking that chance, dude. Why do you think there's security in a strip joint, huh? Why do you think there's security, man? You know what I mean? In case you, because when they when you get fucked out of money, they there to beat your ass if you complain. You understand? You be like, you know, man, that bitch. She was supposed to give me an extra lap there. Man, let me go. You're in a strip joint, fucker. You, that's like going to a, you at a crack house and said, man, somebody gave me a needle. <laughs> you in a crack house. <laughs> man, this is bullshit. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Know what context you're in. You understand? What Cardi B said was, I don't, I, Cardi B goes, yo, I used to take these mother, and, and think about how they treated her as a stripper. You think they were, you think they were opening the door for her? Welcome to my home, mademoiselle. Hello. They were like this, get it, bitch, get it, bitch, yeah, get on this dick, bitch, yeah, bitch, uh, bitch, you like that, huh, bitch, yeah, bitch. She's like, okay, I got your bitch, though. So it was, it was, it was straight, gorilla style, gorilla style, you know, and you lost. You lost. You got a dildo in your ass, shaking in the corner, your money gone, and the TV still on. <laughs> you got forensic files on because it's a marathon with your ass up with panties on. Fuck you. <laughs> like Cardi B would say, crit, crit, crit. you got caught. You got got. Crit, crit. Like I'd be like, crit. <laughs> shit. Fuck out of here. I don't feel sorry for dudes at strip joints, man. That's the chance you take, man. You feel me? That's the chance you take. Uh, well, you ever been to a strip joint and a girl charge you mad? Don't you be like thinking, oh, it's gonna be 20. She'd be like, that'll be 30. And you pay that shit because you're gonna get fucked up. You be like, here you go. Damn, I didn't know it was that much. Shit. See, if I wanna get teased, I'll just ask any of the girls I know. Shit. I get teased for free. Hell. I mean, you know, I, I've obviously been to strip clubs, yeah. you know, for years and years, but I'm not really a strip club guy. I'm I mean, not a guy who's like, I don't even. All right, so weekend we gotta go hit the strip club. Like I'll go to a strip club maybe a couple times a year if my yeah. friends are down right. for it. Like I do it for shit and it. giggles. I do it. I'm yeah, gonna that's tell it. you. I go to Houston with my friend. I forgot what the strip club. It's a great strip club. They got they serve breakfast. One of the best buffets. They got a chef. It's called Eggs and Legs. Shout out to Houston. Eggs and Legs. That shit is so good. 
Hey, man, well, you know when breakfast is good, when a girl's saying you want a lap dance, I'm like, yo, could you move? I'm trying to get some sausage. <laughs> Should have been the fucking way shaking your ass. I'm trying to eat scrambled eggs. Bitch. What the fuck? Yo, the food is so good. It's a gourmet chef in Houston. I forgot. I know if, if people from Houston are watching, they know what I'm talking about. Man, my boy Gerald, Gerald uh, Terragosa, he's a Filipino dude, used to be a DJ at this spot. And he took me to this motherfucker. And I just ate food and I just watched these dudes literally like spend money and they and they and they and they just go crazy. They go, yo, we gotta go to the strip joint. I'm not, you're like me. I'm not, I don't give a fuck about a strip joint. I'm not impressed by it. The only thing I am impressed is the pole dancers. Oh my God. The pole dancers, when they know how to do that shit, I go, yo, how that shit is amazing. It's like some Cirque de Los Cirque de Soleil shit. But in the ghetto, it's it's like some ghetto Cirque du Soleil. You understand? <laughs> it's it's beautiful shit. But other than that, this shit is corny to me. I think it's just dumb. And then to, to have girls just talking to you with titties out going, hey, what's up? How you doing? All right. I'm just chilling. Just chilling, you know. You're like, okay. You know what I mean? It's weird. It's just weird. It's a little weird. It's a little, a little weird. weird for me. I feel you on that. You know what I mean? I'm, I feel you. I, are you a porn guy? I'm a porn guy. I'm a porn guy. I'm a poor, I mean, look at me. I, I got porn face. <laughs> this is a, hey, I'm gonna tell you, this is how every dude looks in porn. I'm not lying. No, I know you guys don't know what you look like, but this is how you look. When you watch a porn, that's you focusing. <laughs> and I ain't trying to be in no strip joint with my porn face, man. I'm, I'm <laughs> well, I think that uh, ultimately, Nothing's gonna happen to Cardi B. No, nah, I don't, I don't think, think anything's her, her her momentum is too is too heavy. And 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 she's already honest. You know, the thing about Cardi B that's smart about her is she was always honest. She was always real with her shit. She was always like, I was a stripper, I did this, I did that. So nobody can really say anything to her. That's why we laugh at it because she came out the box being honest. See, a guy like Cosby didn't come out being honest. You feel me? I'm not saying I don't know if everything that happened that he did was true. I'm sure a lot of it was. But Cosby came out. How did Cosby come out? I'm family. everybody's dad and everybody got to be good. And he got, to, you know, got to the family and the what He did all that shit. Now, if Cosby came out and said, I fuck bitches in the ass. I drug people. I don't give a fuck. And that, we would have been like, well, that's Cosby, you know. You know what I'm saying? I don't give a shit. I told the girl to suck my dick, and I said, whatever, put it in the face, and I was drugging bitches. He didn't do that. Richard Pryor was honest out the box, pretty much. So when shit happened to Richard, we were like, well, he did. it's not like he was lying. You know what I mean? So Cardi B came out being real honest. He, she's been on your show. She's been on her show. She was honest and very candid. So that, to me, is almost like it's lightweight shit. You know, she was a stripper. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. It's not like she worked at, you know, the child's child and human services. Like she was not like at HR. You know what I mean? And then she was drugging motherfuckers and leave, but that would have been different. She's a stripper. You know? Well, R. Kelly has been arrested. Yeah. And he's facing a bunch of charges. Yeah. But the lawyer, uh, what's his name? Uh Avenatti. The one that was like the head lawyer that was trying to convict him, I guess got caught trying to extort money from Nike. <laughs> yeah, idiot. And he was and, trying to threaten uh, him. Yeah. And I guess like in part of the recordings, he was saying how like, well, just like the R. Kelly case, 90% of it is bullshit. So he's already admitting that 90% of it was bullshit, which they're saying is going to possibly affect this case. So 90% of it was, of 90% of R. Kelly doing what he did was bullshit, or 90% R of his- R. Kelly's, 90% uh, of the accusations against R. Kelly are bullshit. Wow. That's what he said, I guess, on tape. Well, um, that's a tough one, man. I And I, R. Kelly, listen, he's from Chicago. Um, I had friends that sang for him. My friend Andre was in public announcement. I know another guy that that danced with R. Kelly when he was at R. Kelly MGM. I used to see R. Kelly in Chicago, the Cotton Club. And and you know, and you want to like not believe the shit. When I saw the documentary, you saw the doc, right? Mm-hmm. 
man, if these girls are lying, they need the, they need the Oscars because good Lord, man. Whew. They did a good job. I didn't see nothing fake about that shit. And I'm sitting here like this watching the, the shit like, oh, shit. Holding women hostage. And and I think, you know what fucked him up? Um, when he was, when he was um, interviewing with Gail. You know, people don't understand Gail is Oprah's stunt double. <laughs> you know what I mean? Gail is that Gail is Oprah too. I don't know. She is the second version of Oprah. You know what I mean? If you yeah. see Oprah, I, I think if, act- if Oprah ever like if Oprah needs like a like a liver or a kidney, she'll oh, just yeah, go grab it from Gail. Gail. If yeah. Oprah ever is in an action film and she rolls out of a car, that was Gail. <laughs> if she's in a karate scene, it's Gail's wig. <laughs> you know what I mean? And and when R. Kelly was going, when he snapped, remember when he snapped, everybody knows. They made memes out of it. They made fun of him with the memes. When he, The part that really bothered me was when they were putting the makeup on him and he let them do it. I was like, dude, it, 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 to me, it looked like it was fake because he should have been like this. Get the makeup off me, man. Fuck this. This ain't about looking pretty. My mind is telling me no. <laughs> He didn't, but he went like this. I'm serious. Get right here. This is, it just looked a little weird. You know what I mean? Well, uh, well, you know, I mean, you mentioned uh, Andre from uh, Public Announcement. We actually interviewed Public Announcement. Well, Andre went to school with my brother at St. Gregory mm-hmm. High School. So I know Andre. Yeah. Yeah. I'm- and, you know, they both said, you know, because we interviewed two of the members, and they both said that based on what they seen with the girls, it was pretty accurate. From your point of view, as group mates with R. Kelly, spending a lot of personal time with him, everything that you've personally seen, do you feel that surviving R. Kelly was accurate or very one-sided? Okay. I would say that it was pretty, pretty accurate. Pretty accurate. And and I'm going to say that in terms of... um. Most of the women that that spoke, those survivors, they, you know, I believe they were telling the truth. And, you know, I mean, you got some stories that's kind of like, you know, a little shady, like Drea stories are a little shady at places, sparkles, a little shady in places. But as for the girls that were actually young, their stories are valid. I believe. This is just my my belief. So in t- So from your point of view, what you saw in surviving R. Kelly was accurate. Yeah. Yeah, for the most part. No, oh, they trying to make a comeback. <laughs> this motherfucker, well, they just gonna be is, called he, public, public announcement, just them two. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we talked about the whole, like one of the dudes was holding up the 18 and over sign. We talked about that too. So I interviewed one of the girls that was with R. Kelly for like five years or yes. something. This girl named uh, Lisa Van Allen. Okay. She got with R. Kelly when uh, he was, well, she was 17 and he was like, I don't know, 30 or something. Right. And uh, we were talking about the whole Aaliyah thing. And she said that he confided, you know, in her with all the Aaliyah stories. Mm -hmm. And, you know, first he said that, uh, you know, R. Kelly told her that he had married Aaliyah because he had gotten her pregnant. Oh, man. Oh. And and she was like 15 at the time. Oh, man. Now, that part I had heard before. I had heard that rumor, and actually, when I like talked about it with, with a public announcement, they yeah. were like, yeah, we had kind of heard that too, but we're not sure. But then she said... He actually stayed at their home in Detroit, and her mother uh, actually was sexually attracted to him as well, and he said when Aaliyah would go to sleep, that he would... Uh, this Now, this is what he said. He said that he would go in the living room, and him and her would do sexual acts on the couch while Aaliyah was sleeping in the bedroom. R. Kelly was having sex with Aaliyah and her mother at the same time? That's I mean, not he, the exact same time, but that's the what same he said. time frame? That's what he says, yeah. <laughs> Yo, son. Yo, I don't see nothing wrong with a little bump and grind. You know what I mean? He was messing with the mom while the, well, the where was the husband? It was just single mom? No, well, I don't know. I don't know whether her parents were together or not, but he was messing with her mom and her during the same time frame. Shit. Well, at least with the mom, it's legal, you know? 
Yeah. I mean, that's legal. That's a grown ass woman. That's cool. I'd rather hear that he was fucking people's moms. You know what I mean? I, I don't yeah. mind that. But the 15 year old shit, though, my man. And Aaliyah, listen, Aaliyah was fine, dude, but she's 15, bro. She's 15. I, I'll be I'll be honest, man. I've never I have never found Aaliyah has a nice face, I get it, but I've never looked at Aaliyah and said, wow, like she's bad. But that's I the type of woman I want. Pretty. I thought she was pretty. I mean, for, as far as she's not a she wasn't a voluptuous well, chick. That's what I'm saying. She 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 was so skinny, she always looked to me like an underage girl. Yeah, and that's well, never been like yeah. for me, it's like, yo, like I'm not attracted. I'm more into curvier, you, like, you know, women. You are you like, like like you like real fat, like what kind of booties, but you like the big ones that be like pucka, 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 pucka. That you like that yeah. one? The ones that like yeah. hit against your belly, pucka, pucka. That kind exactly. Or do you, you like go. the bone one? Think, think, think. No, think. no, not the, the bone. The ones one. that cut not into your one. pelvis? What kind? No. You like no, big you like bad. big breasts? No. Do, yeah. You like of the big so you like girls with the big titties. And the big ass. You like both. Where the titties are going, chaka, 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 All that. Chaka. All the above. Baka, baka, chaka. So you just want to hear a... That kind of shit? Pretty much, yeah. I'm not... I'm into like... I like leaner women. I'm into that. That are of age, for Christ's sake. I mean, you know... I, I can't even hang out with a 19... I can't... When 19-year-olds talk to me that are... Le I'm just like, are you kidding me? They got to be late 20... You know, oh, oh, you know what I mean? They gotta be older than that. Like, have you heard teenagers talk? I don't even understand how someone can like a 15, 16. Are you kidding me? Have you seen when they walk? They just they got those teenage legs. They're not even developed yet. You know, they're just well, goofy. Uh, well, you know, I talked to Nick Cannon about this because you know, Nick Cannon's first album was pretty much done by R. Kelly. You know, produced, mostly produced yeah. by R. Kelly. And they yeah. worked together and everything else like that. Right. And um his theory is mm. What R. Kelly can do in a studio is genius. Like, I've watched my man maneuver and make a hit record in less than 15 minutes. Mm. But that, but he, the way he, his social skills are poor. Yeah, it's just, like, we see that. Like, I get, I see why that man is attracted to a younger girl because he's there, that they talk Mentally? to Yeah, they, they're on the same level. Oh. <laughs> Like no sophisticated I've, I've grown. Never, yeah. I've never actually looked at it like what that. What grown ass woman <laughs> other than once you get over the fact that this man is a great singer and performer, what's your conversation gonna be about? Well well And you know, an illiterate man doesn't really have a lot to offer a mature woman. Very true, but a mature woman can offer tutoring. You understand? Well, not if the person doesn't want to learn. All right. We'll see. And that's my thing is, he, so he likes a 15 year old because he can't read. I mean, damn it. So you got two people who can barely read <laughs> trying to teach each other <laughs> some shit. You feel me? That doesn't make yeah. any sense. Okay. If you like a younger woman, get a 20 year old, not a 15. Get someone that's 20, 21. Get someone, you can, you can get a 25 year old, bro. Man, listen, get an 18 year old if that's what you if want. If anything, yeah, get someone legal. legal. Get, get someone damn. legal. If you're illiterate, I mean, okay, just because you're illiterate, you can't, you, oh, maybe you can't read the license? I don't know. Can you see numbers? I don't fucking know. You know what I'm saying? It's like this this looks legal. Can't read it. Okay. <laughs> I mean, what the fuck? And I'm not even trying to smash an R, but God, I don't know because this, it's, 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 it's weird now. We don't know if these girls are lying. And I've talked to some girls, 25 years old, 26. They go, they believe some of these girls are lying. Some of them, and they're not, they're not necessarily R. Kelly fans. They go, a lot of I know girls that book that fucking lie. I don't know. I'm just gonna wait until this shit is over, because I don't know. Cause his plea, you know, he went off. He said, people are trying to destroy me. Da da da. What if he's right? What if he's right? I don't know. I'm I'm kind of stuck in the middle. You know what I mean? The whole shit is kind of funny. It's it's kind of funny because it's always like, why is he hanging out at McDonald's? You remember he he got up and he's hanging out at McDonald's, bro. God damn, hanging out at McDonald's. You don't nobody hangs out at McDonald's. You don't hang out. At, you go in and get the fuck out. Use the drive through. Yeah, the drive through. You don't even at the drive through. There are girls, young girls working there. You grab and go. You know what I mean? <laughs> 
So it's just, it's just some of his behavior. You just go, dude, you're, it's not looking good. Hanging out at the McDonald's, not right. even Chick Fil well, A, you know, son. Chick Fil A got all the women. <laughs> you know, now what people are bringing up now is that Elvis Presley got with Lisa Marie when she was fourteen. Yeah, they should get his ass, dig up his bones, put him in jail. Jailhouse rock, <laughs> motherfucker. Jailhouse rock. Going in the front him in the county jail. Dun, dun, get his ass. Fuck that. Dig that shit up. He's like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't. I'm sorry. I thought I'd know she was 14. <laughs> well, there's a there's an interview with her. Uh-huh. Uh, I think it was Barbara Walters where she's like, yeah, I was 14. Ooh. He was like 24. Wait. And her parents okayed it. It was Elvis. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. she was 14. He was 24. Yeah. And uh, he was huge. The then, fact, right? I think he was pretty big. It was like in Germany or something. Like her parents were out there, and he was like performing out there or something like that. And um, just, just the whole thing, man, is like, what are you doing hanging out with a fourteen-year-old? Fuck, fuck, wrong with you? Yeah, yeah, like I don't, I don't, you know. Yeah, but but honestly, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and say this. Mm. I think the worst out of the bunch. Yeah. The absolute worst, who's not in prison, who's still going about his life right now, Ooh. is Woody Allen. Yeah, that's some bullshit. They need to take his ass, old ass to jail. You, this is your adopted daughter. You are changing her diapers oh. and like oh. taking her on her first date to school and then you end up fucking her that's afterwards disgusting. when she gets of age. And it's the fuck wrong with you. You're changing the diapers and that's when you got fell in love. Ugh, it's disgusting. And that, and he's married to her, and no one's saying anything. Roman Polanski, a lot of white men, they're taking down all the black men. It seems like it looks like a conspiracy to take down all the black men, which is fucked up. Woody Allen needs to take his punk ass to jail too. You understand? That's like straight molestation. He gets to marry. You're just making example of all the black men, which is unfair. You need to be taking down some of these white. And there's so many white men that that date underage girls. I mean, you know what I mean? That marry 17-year-olds, 14-year-olds. They should be taken down too, not just us. Now it becomes a racial thing, you know? And and even with the, I don't know if you can bring up the Michael Jackson thing. I don't believe none of that shit. So you don't believe any of the Michael Fuck Jackson no. stuff? Nope. None of it. Hell no. Did you, see, uh, did you see Leaving Neverland? Nope. Okay. Because I ain't leaving it. Because I love, listen, I, if I, I wish I would have got invited to Neverland. You know what I mean? I... I know Jermaine Jackson. I know um, Jermaine. I've known him for years. Like when I see him in the streets, he shows me love, whatever. But he stood up for his brother. He said, let my brother rest in peace. Michael didn't do that shit. Michael even said it. Mike, Michael even said, "I yeah, they sleep in my room. Yeah, they come in my room. He said it. He's like, first of all, think about this. If you're a kid, if you're Michael Jackson, you meet Michael Jackson, you want to... Hang out with Michael. Oh, let's go to Michael's room. I'm sure Michael's room was a fucking living room, by the way. It wasn't like some little bedroom. You know, his room was like, you know what I'm saying? And he probably like had a bunch of bed, like, hey, I'm going to sleep here. And Michael, we're having fun. That's normal shit. You know what I mean? First of all, parents. It's not that normal. No, no, not wait that a minute, normal. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Listen, I, I was with you until you said that's what normal if Michael's, shit. You, do you, what, what, how big was Michael's room? Was it a little fucking cot? Was he laying, sleeping in a cot with these motherfuckers? No. Let me tell you something. Hold on, hold on. L let me just, because I was with you up until a certain point. What? Until it doesn't matter how big or small the room was for a parent to leave their child alone. Parents fall. Exactly. Parents fall. Exactly. Parents fall. Fuck that. Parents fall because they want that money. Parents fall because Michael Jackson is the greatest entertainer we have, first of all, we have lots of great entertainers from James Brown to Michael Jackson. They people talking that shit now because they're trying to fuck his legacy up, and it ain't gonna, it ain't working with me. He's the coldest motherfucker to ever reach the stage. I saw Michael in concert, okay, Ooh. and I, and I saw him, and I scream like a bitch, and I don't scream like <laughs> a bitch for nobody, okay. And you know I'm I'm Wu Tang all day, but I'm like Wu Tang, yeah, I love these motherfuckers. I saw Michael Jackson with my brother, and we was like. All right, Michael's coming out. Ah! Ah! I was screaming right along those girls. I was screaming. I threw my dirty drawers. They were all doo-doo stained. And I tossed them at Mike. And I hope he would have caught them. I was like, ah! Ah! I did the same shit. 
And that's the only dude that could bitch me up like that. Michael, because we all wanted to be Mike. We all danced like Mike. Mike influenced the world. There's kids in this generation, like little kids that know who Michael Jackson is. Please, man. Michael Jackson was so popular, his name, I thought he had only one name. I was like, what Michael Jackson's last name? What's Michael Jackson's last name? Michael Jackson. He just say Michael Jackson. We wouldn't even say Michael Jackson. We was like, Michael Jackson. I love Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. It was Michael Jackson. You know what I mean? And he influenced the world. He had a good heart. He has, he has um, a, a Guinness book. He gave out away to the most charities. He never bragged about that shit. He was a hump. And I know a guy, my friend, my friend who's a cameraman, and his father was a big, is a big producer of the Oscars and all that. Michael used to hang out. And he said Michael was the nicest guy. He treated us with respect. He was so kind. He never did anything crazy. I know people who knew Mike like that. I don't believe none of that shit. I think it's the fact that Michael had power. Michael owned Sony. He owned a lot of shit. And they wanted to get rid of his ass. And they wanted to ruin his fucking reputation. That's how I feel. I don't want to hear that shit. You know what I mean? Michael was dope. Well, and he influenced uh, everybody. Every <laughs> continent knew who Michael was. And if Michael gave a message, you know, people be like, I, I want to listen to that. Too much power, man. So they go, let's do this child shit. And because he was a child, that's why he loved children. He was a child. He wasn't, he wasn't creepy like that. Creepy, yeah, as in he couldn't go anywhere. Think about that. You're famous for 40, 40 years. You can't go anywhere. You know what I mean? You can't go anywhere. Michael couldn't go anywhere. And first of all, touching Mike, people touched Mike, bro. You know, when he was, people were raped, grabbing his, they were grabbing him. I would have molested Mike. I would have molested. It would have been my fault. I would have been like, yo, yeah. did you touch Mike? Yes, I did. I had to I had to smell him. I had to smell him. This motherfucker is, I can't, I love this motherfucker. I, I was like, I touched his, oh, it's magical. I ain't washing his finger. Shamon, shamon, shamon. Shaka do not. Fuck that. Well, uh, a couple years back, yeah. I interviewed uh, Ron Newt. Ron Newt? Uh, Ron Newt. Uh, was uh was a gangster from the Bay Area, from okay. San Francisco, and uh, he had uh this boy group called the Neutrons, his his sons, and that were signed to Joe Jackson's label. Mm. So he actually spent a lot of time at Michael Jackson's house. Right. The, there's pictures. With, Encino, there's pictures. With, Encino. Encino. Yeah. Okay. That house. Exactly. So there's pictures of him wearing the glove, holding the jacket. Yeah, He's got that's dope. you know a bunch of pictures with him and the monkeys and, and everything, his kids, everything else like that. And he said, yeah, I said, I'm here to help Michael. Oh, he said, oh no, we don't, that ain't what we want with you. We heard it, that, that your boy spent nights at the house. We wanna know if Michael tampered with him. I just picked him up or touched him in any kind of way. If he did, we got 200,000 for you. I said, huh? I had just got out of prison. I said, man, I can't do that. Can't tell no lie like that. I ain't doing that. You see? And uh, there, there's definitely a degree of that. And, mm -hmm. you know, for example, in the documentary at this point, some of the stories that the two, the two young men are talking about, the timelines don't match up. Right. Like, oh, we were at Michael's house and we were on the, on the roller coaster and they actually pulled up the records. And they're like, well... The roller coaster wasn't even built until five years later, See? so that's See? not even possible. And even the director is now saying that some of the stories aren't matching up. Of course not. And, uh, of yeah, course, man, I don't know. That's that and Wade I, I Robinson you, dude, right? Yeah. Yeah, Wade Robinson was mad too. Another, and I know some cats say well, he was mad because there was he was a dancer, choreographer, so he didn't right. he missed out on some gigs. There was some shit that he was supposed to do, and he got mad at Mike. You understand? Because I know a friend that used to dance. And used to be in Michael's videos and, and audition. Sometimes he wouldn't get it. Sometimes he would. And yeah, he was just salty. He was a salty choreographer. You know what I mean? And and back in the day, these motherfuckers said Michael didn't do shit to them. All of a sudden, Michael did something to you. Then I don't even believe all that. He opened my booty cheeks and shit. Get the fuck out of here. Michael Jackson opening booty cheeks, man. Michael Jackson. That, that don't even seem like he would. Really? He was like this. <laughs> Come on. Let me see. Come on. No. Mike don't do no shit. I don't believe none of that shit, bro. I'm telling you. Mike was a, a legitimate dude. Mike said they're trying to trap me. I'm telling you. I really believe Mike, they were like mad. Because you remember Paul McCartney got mad at Mike because Mike said, hey, I, I own the Beatles. I own all that shit. Paul was mad. 
What? Uh, he he bought the publishing. He was publishing. And 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 McCartney was pissed. You understand? Oh yeah, no. I remember I interviewed Eddie Griffin, and he he was friends with Michael Jackson, mm, and right. he actually broke down that whole situation. I bought the Beatles. Yeah. While I'm doing the video with the Beatle, that's gangster. Right. With Michael Paul, Walls with, with the Paul McCartney. Paul McCartney. If you're gonna sell the Beatles? How much you sell them for? Oh, I don't know. You know, about sixty million. Wow, that's a lot of money. That motherfucker go right to his trailer, get his people on the phone. Paul don't find out till the next fucking day. Michael done bought the Beatles. That motherfucker come on and say, "How can you buy Beatles? How can you buy Beatles?" He said sixty. I gave you sixty-four. That's a lot of money. The girl is mine. <laughs> Your publishing's mine. This nigga's a gangster, nigga. Michael Jackson was gangster. We don't make a billion dollars being no punk motherfucker. Yeah. Man, listen, I don't know, man. I think it's definitely money motivated. Yes. It's definitely money motivated. You don't believe it. You don't believe it, Vlad. You know you don't. I don't, don't. believe all of it, but the thing is about Michael, mm. man, listen, you never really saw him with any women. Bullshit. Ever. Michael was with plenty of women. Tatum O'Neill, Brooke Shields, Presley. My, you don't, you don't, first of all, Michael probably got more pussy than everybody on the planet. He got so much pussy, he had to be like, I'm good, Shamadona. Let me alone. I, mm. I can't. I don't know about that, man. But, but what? Michael got more pussy than every, Michael could fuck every, any continent. Every girl with a coochie knew who Michael was. You don't think Michael got at, man, fuck out of here, man. Michael was with chicks. He just loved children because he didn't have a childhood, man. He built. You think he built the roller coaster monkey so he can get child butt? The fuck out of here. He loved children and he wanted to entertain children. And I'm sure he brought in kids that didn't have like underprivileged children. Children, he just wanted kids to have fun because he didn't get to have it. Because I'm sorry, his pops took him away from that because he was the cash cow. Michael Jackson was the cash cow. There would be no Jacksons without Michael, man. And not to put down the Jacksons. The Jackson 5 people, Michael was one of the greatest lead men of a band, man. Of a boy band, Michael Jackson was the cash cow. I'm sorry, but the reason why there was Janet Jackson, the reason why any other Jacksons existed because of Michael's prominence, not to put down anybody, but let's be honest, it's because of Mike. When you hear Michael Jackson, it's like, like if the Jacksons get on stage, you'll be like, where the fuck is Mike? It was Michael Jackson, which there's nothing wrong with it. It's hey, let's okay, how about this? If Rolling Stones, where's Mick Jagger, motherfucker? You're not just gonna be Rolling Stones without Mick Jagger. You need Mick Jagger, dog. You know Van Halen. I need. Where's uh motherfucking uh what's his name? Uh, David Lee Roth. David Lee Roth, man. Where's David? I mean, it, it is what it is. So Michael didn't. Man, that's bullshit, dude. It's just that here's the thing. It's because Michael's voice is soft. That's the problem. If Michael was had a deep voice, motherfuckers would believe him. Cause Michael's like this. I'm telling you, I didn't do it. They're lying. He sounds creepy. No, I never did it. Sounds like a finger's going in your ass. No, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. That's how you talk before you put a finger in the ass. You gotta be soft with it. But if he was like this, yo, man, shit is bullshit, man. Fuck that. I did too much. I never touched them goddamn kids, man. I ain't never done no shit like that. I'd have believed, see, it would have been more believable if his voice was deeper. But I think the fact that his voice was so high, people were like, Nah, man, that motherfucker did that shit. You know what I mean? But I don't believe it. Michael is innocent, plain and simple. I think the job was done where, you know, Michael ain't around no more, but they they trying to get all that shit, man. That's, that's just how I feel. And people were trying to get money from him, which is pretty fucking sad. So Michael is legit. He's the greatest. And I ain't backing off on it. That's my man. I am keep playing shit. I'll play all his music. His music's the shit. I wanna rock with you. Kiss my ass. Wanna be starting something. Mama say, mama sa, mama kusa. I don't know what African country that was from. Even Africans are baffled. But Michael lives forever. Strong. Yeah. Fuck that. Greatest ever. Well, speaking of Africans. Yes. <laughs> That's me. Uh, speaking of Africans. You're two, uh, you're two uh, African homies. <laughs> the two brothers. They, everybody came down on me as soon as that... Jesse Smollett shit came down, you know, all of a sudden it's like, God, everybody call me, <laughs> Godfrey, you. how could you let this happen to you? How did you let two Nigerians, how could you do it? Why didn't you stop them? I'm like, I didn't know. That shit, 
Listen, he was acquitted, right? They mm -hmm. dropped all the charges. Um, I don't know. Chris Rock kind of capped on his ass. Did you see that? Yep. That shit was funny as <laughs> that shit was funny as hell. <laughs> but I don't know what this, I don't, I don't know what to believe. I really don't know what to believe. It just seems so shady. Because here's the thing. When the when the when when it first came out that two white men, I mean, I guess some white men and some ski masks and MAGA hats, they grabbed them and say, Aren't you that little nigga from that little faggot nigga from Empire? I was like, at first I was like, yo, fuck that shit. This is bullshit. Because white dudes do do fucked up crimes to black people. Like that that little piece of shit motherfucker in Dallas that beat up that black woman. I, it, what's his name? Mm -hmm. Sheffield, whatever. I hope they catch his ass and give him the same treatment. He's the Dallas dude that's punching the black woman. Like, literally. Haymakers. You know? they the, A lot of white men are doing that nowadays. With this Trump shit, a lot of white men are getting bold. Grabbing, but they always grab like the innocent ones. They'll, they'll fight black women. They fight little black kids, but they don't fight them old ashy knuckle brothers that ain't got no job with the Timberlands on. You know what I mean? That'll knock you the fuck out. I notice a lot of these white dudes are pussies. I'm talking about the racist ones. They're a bunch of bitch made motherfuckers that won't fuck with real dudes. Anyway, <laughs> I'm just being honest. They go fucking hitting black women, shit like that. When I heard that, I go, I was on that, uh-oh, these white boys are up to up to that bullshit again because for some reason Trump is giving these motherfuckers all this boldness to just be grabbing minorities and shit. So I was like, man, I can't believe it. Then they showed the noose on his neck and the whole thing. And then when I said, wait a minute, something like, I just, I was like, wait, some, and this is Chicago. And if you guys understand how cold it is in Chicago, I don't think you understand, motherfucker. I, I grew up in that shit. It's the kind of cold where the homeless have gone home. <laughs> the homeless went the home. The homeless be like, ah, uh, uh, this is some bullshit. I'm gonna change my life. God damn, I'm the cold and motherfucker. You know what I mean? This is the kind of cold where the va uh, Vaseline petroleum jelly dries out. You feel me? Chicago cold is a whole different thing than New York cold. So you gonna tell me some cats came out in the cold and you were going to subway? It just didn't, and I was like, what are some middle-aged white men watching Empire for? I'm not saying white people don't watch Empire, but it just was like, the demographic didn't sound right. You feel me? It just was like, eh. And in this, and in this, in this ter time of, 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 of turmoil, the mag, I mean, that attack sounded like normal. Like, yeah, this is the kind of shit they're doing. But 20 below, Chicago, and then you got dragged, but he didn't really look injured. Right. He didn't really look beat up, beat up. R right, because I remember I interviewed Trey D about this. And did you see how big them dudes was? They would <laughs> they would have mauled that guy if they really would have wanted, you know, if that would have been the situation. So I don't oh, know. Oh, yeah, that. those I, motherfuckers look like what? they were they were fucking monsters. Like, yeah. you know, they And that's why dudes... he said he paid them the thirty five hundred because he wanted abs like them. <laughs> right. He would have been Jesse Smolder. Yeah, you know, he had a little scratch on his face. He had a little, and it it was really, really like a it, like he had just like a pretty boy scratch, like you know, had the little rope, <laughs> his picture and shit. It was weird. I was just like, and 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 listen, I could be wrong. I can be, I, but it just looked a little. And even Joe Budden on State of the Culture, he said, and you know, people get mad at Joe Budden because they always think Joe Budden talking shit. Joe Budden was like, I didn't, I, I, I was dying. I think he was lying. And Joe Budden ends up, I think, being right. But now he's acquitted of the shit. I I don't know what he was thinking. I I, I think he was not getting paid enough on Empire or something like right. that. And uh I guess Jesse's a lawyer when they asked about the whole thing, because he said the two white men jumped him. Yeah. She said that maybe that the two brothers were wearing white face. I, I mean, she sounded so fucking stupid. First of all, white face, two Nigerians with fucking powder in the face. That's just some ashy niggas coming at you. Not, not to use that word. I, you know, I don't ever use the N word um, fucking um, haphazardly. 
But that's two ashy <laughs> motherfuckers coming at you. And you can see Ash. When you see an ashy brother and a white face, come on, man. You know? And I'm sorry, but Niger two Nigerian dudes, their accent, they don't even curse. They, you can't even, yo, are you this faggot nigga? Do you know Nigerians be like, are you that faggot nigga? We seen you on Empire. We know it is you. They, they, we don't know how to curse. The accent, you understand? It doesn't, it doesn't match up. And these were some big ass Nigerian dudes. I get all the phone calls. They like, yo, God, was that you? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> they, they was like, this, like, how could you do this to us, man? Why? We are Africans. We are, <laughs> it just, everything looks, looks suspect. Were those two guys extras on Empire? Yeah. I just, I, I don't, I don't get it. It just, he wants you to know, be, you know what I think happened? This is what I what think. What do you think? This is all theory, so I don't know. This is all theories. You know, when dealing with the legal system and, and yeah. you know, talking to cops and interviewing them and everything else like that, the general impression I get is that when it comes to prosecutors, yeah. they will only take on a case if they're like 95% sure they'll win. Oh, right. That, no, no, no prosecutor wants to have a record of losing half their hell cases. Hell no. You know what I mean? Hell like they're no. only going to court because, okay, we got all our ducks yeah. lined up. Yeah. You know, and yes, every so often it'll go left like the OJ trial. But right. in general, they got it all lined up. They right. got all the police. They got the, the whatever. Even, even if something is, even if something is wrong and you know, as a prosecutor, I might lose this case. You're still getting money though. Because that person got to nah, pay you. Nah, no? Nah, nah. That's not nah, how it goes? Nah, nah, It's not how it goes. Oh, I thought because, you, because if I'm defending you, you paying me, motherfucker, even if we lose. No? Well, I mean, the defense lawyer doesn't care. Okay. But the prosecutor, the, the, the state. They he, they lose money if they lose the, the case. City. Well, no, but that particular, the prosecutor that's elected will lose their job. Wow. If they keep losing cases. Got you. Gotcha. That's the whole point. If gotcha. they have a losing record, gotcha. like the, the mayor or the governor or whoever will yeah. be like, okay, get this person out of here. Let's put in someone who's actually competent right. that can win cases gotcha. for us. Because, you know, it costs a lot of money to go to trial. Right. Hell yeah. A lot of money. Yeah. A lot of money to go to trial. Like, uh, you know, defending yourself in a trial is like half a million dollars. Jeez. So think about it on the on the other side. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's, it's big. So I think in this case... Once they started getting more info and everything else like that, they saw some holes in their original theories. Right. You know, like the 3500 was actually paid for training. It wasn't paid to do this. And, right. And then the brothers start changing their story a little bit and they didn't want to whatever, whatever. And they're like, look, if we take this to trial, the jury will find, you know, since it's a criminal, a criminal case, yeah. they, will, they will find a reasonable doubt. Like there's already a couple of reasonable doubts sprinkled in here. Oh man, we're better off just dropping it all and just taking this L because taking an L in trial is a lot worse than dropping all the charges. You oh, see what I'm wow. saying? I think that's what happened. There was just a few things that happened that they're like, we're going to lose this case overall. So so I think boom. that um, I don't know what's going to happen with it because he said what's funny is in the press conference he goes. <laughs> I just want to get back to work. And they're like, uh, I don't know about that part. <laughs> I don't know about that part, bro. He goes, I mean, you fucked up your own work. I mean, he acted like someone interrupted him. I mean, if right. this shit. I mean, it was like like one of those OJ wins. Like he wins, but nobody believes him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? I like, just want to get back to work, get back to my family. Uh, I don't know if they're going to let you in, bro. Because Smollett, he has the sister, right? Yeah. The, the one chick that I like, she's a good actress, man. That's the Smollett family. And I, 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 it, it almost seems like he was embellishing, like he was enjoying this kind of attention. The fact yeah. that he's wearing sunglasses to these, you know, in the airport. And, oh, oh, come on. Do you know? Do you know where he went wrong when he called himself Gay Tupac? I when he was like this, they hit me, I hit them back. Did you see that shit when he's doing a little on the mic? And I, I fought back. I call myself the Gay Tupac. Word, man. Come on, dog. Two, I, what the fuck are you doing? Like, that's what I'm saying. It was looking mad suspect, you know? And I was, at, out the box, I was mad for him. Then I started going, you know, I was like, Scooby-Doo. 
I don't, I don't know. I was like, he was, it was looking real like a Scooby-Doo fucking mystery, dude. You know? So, it's Jesse Smollett. We knew it was him. Yeah. Zoinks. Wow, Scoob. You know? <laughs> so, it, it, it's not a good look. I don't know what's going to happen to his ass, but it's really awkward. That dude, that was some awkward ass shit. I mean, if he wanted to get notoriety, he got it on some real fuckery. Yeah. And like I said, he he won technically. I mean, they dropped all the charges, but nobody really believes him. Were you were you an Empire fan? For like the first two seasons. First two just, seasons, then they just started. It was a lot of tonguing. I just had to go. It was too much tonguing. Yeah. Like, it'd be like this. On the next Empire. Oh, shit. I got to go. On the next Empire. Oh, goddamn. <laughs> it was just like, it was too much. It was too, I, listen, unless, like I said, I ain't like one of those phobes. You know, I ain't one of those. I ain't uh, no phobe, but it was a little too much. I'm I'm very 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 heterosexual, so when I see too much of that on any level, I'm like, all right, all right. Like it's like even when you see a heterosexual couple, you know, having sex in a movie, I go, do we have to show the whole goddamn thing? We get it, they fucked. God, I can keep it moving. But Empire was like, you know, <laughs> first it'd be Cookie like, let me tell you something. You're like, all right, Cookie. Next minute it's like, ah, no more Empire for me. Well, I mean, I get it because, I mean, Lee Daniels, who's the creator, director, whatever, I know. Um, he's a gay man. Which is fine. An, an, older, an older gay man at that. And I think that he came into it saying, listen, <laughs> uh, gay men do not have a voice, you know, a voice and a, a screen time and, and that type of thing yeah. and be central characters. Yeah. And, you know, we don't get to see gay love on TV, we, but, so I'm going to go ahead and change that. Well, we can gay love it and just hold hands. We ain't got the... Uh, 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 See, I went from empire to umpire. I was like, strike one. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> strike two. <laughs> strike three. I had to get out. I was like, you know what I mean? Ah, I'm, I'm cool on that. I think, you know, but I think that that was his thing. He's like, hey, listen, I'm going to bring more of a platform to, to my own lifestyle. Oh, and nothing, I think that's cool. Listen. I think, I don't I want think anybody, that's fine, man. I don't want and anybody listen, to misconstrue what I'm saying. I'm saying it was like, it, whether it's heterosexual or homosexual, we don't need to see extreme sex scenes. I'm, I'm even on when, when girls are a guy and a girl. Okay, they're kissing, close the door. We get it. I mean, we that we've been on the planet long enough where we know when the door is closed, it's night, and that saxophone music comes on. They fucking we get it. They don't. We don't need to keep showing that shit on any. I don't give a fuck if it's homo, hetero, whatever. Oh, just shit. I don't. You don't have to always show that shit in detail. We get it. <laughs> Shit. Well, uh, Kodak Black said that uh, Tupac and Biggie are legends because they died, but he's a better artist. Next subject, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he, they're not. He's he, what is he? First of all, I'm, I don't know Kodak Black, Black's music. I think I've heard some of it, but you know me. I'm from the school, Illmatic. Wu Tang Forever, you know, paid in full. I mean, I'm, that's my era. I just Biggie Small, you know, the first Biggie album. The same, I'm I'm all that. Eminem, all that's me, and me coming from me and looking at that. That's that. I if he feels that way, listen. There's nothing wrong, wrong with feeling like you're great. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't know the Kodak Black dude. Okay, he's a millennial kid. He's a millennial whatever. But as far as my thing is, fine. Say that you're the greatest, but we'll see your body of work in the long run. And we're going to see if people are wearing your T-shirts, like everybody's wearing Biggie and Tupac, and young people wear Biggie and Tupac. This is what greatness is. People are still wearing Air Jordans. You feel me? That's what the fuck greatness is. So, Kodak Black, if they're wearing your shit in 10 years, 15 years, wearing your sneakers, wearing your T-shirts... And listening to your music for nostalgia's sake, you can call yourself the greatest. You can call yourself the greatest now because you know what I'm saying? I believe in manifestation and acting as if you're already that great, but let's see your body of work. You compare, after you're done, compare Biggie and Tupac, and you're still alive. So you better really surpass them in, in their body of work, okay? Because their shit is solid as fuck. 
And we still listen to that shit, is all I'm saying. They got classic shit. I have no problem. It's not a hate thing against them, but there's nothing wrong with you thinking great. Just prove that shit. Just prove it. That's all I ask is prove that bitch. Well, I mean, personally, I think Kodak Black is dope. He's actually a pretty dope artist. Which Very is, uh, intro, and, introspective in, in the music that he puts and out. Which is beautiful. Yeah. And, and um, yeah. you know, has his own kind of style. Which uh, is, really came up. And I'm came all up about by himself that. with no, no cosigns right. or, or nothing. And uh, built his own following. And there's nothing wrong with that. I don't think there's anything wrong. Like, for example, can you name me a better comedian that's better than you right now? See what I mean? No, you no. feel like you're the best. I, well, I'm I, I, I'm one of the best. I because you know there why? You go. Because listen, art artistry is subjective, man. Let's be real. Artistry is subjective. Some motherfuckers don't don't think I'm funny. They don't want to hear my voice. Listen, let me tell you. When I first started in comedy in the in the urban circuit, you know, I would I was a Cotton Club, the Cotton Club, you know, and that's Bernie Max Club, you know, it was urban as fuck. And I would go on stage, you know, everybody be up like, like this. Yo, what's up? What's up, motherfuckers? What's up? I would purposely go up and go, hey, guys, how you doing? <laughs> this, this stuff is subjective, man. You know what I mean? So, you know, if, if some people don't think, I mean, I think I'm one of the best co comedians, period. Period. In the comedy, mm -hmm. in comedy, period. I'm, I may not be the most popular guy, but as far as pound for pound and mic game, uh, I can go with the best because I was a, I've been around the best. I followed the best. And listen, I can have a show where I'm not the funniest that night, but I'm talking about overall my 22 yeah. years. Fuck what you heard. I can count on maybe I can count on one hand how many times I bombed literally, and I can actually count on maybe this. And I, I'm talking about I'm pretty consistent. And like I said, I'm not everybody's taste. You know what I mean? Like I love I'm a I'm a Cat Williams fan. Like Cat is dope to me. I love Cat Williams. I, I'm a I'm a Mike Epps fan. Ah, Mike Epps had me has me wrong. Some people don't think these guys are funny, and who gives a fuck? But they are some of the best comedians ever. They are one of the best. You can say I'm one of the best because I can't be the best because I'm not funny to everybody. Kevin Hart is one of the best guys. Uh 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 uh. You got Bernie Mac is one of the best. Uh, 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 even though Steve Harvey says some crazy ass shit, are we talking about that today? Oh, the, the monkey comments? Motherfucker, I got to talk about that. But Steve Harvey, to some people, are one of the best. We can all say we're one of the best because of our, our time that we put in it and our proof that I've made motherfuckers laugh. I've destroyed places. I've gotten standing ovations. Boom. Constantly. You've seen me perform. Yeah. You've seen me perform. And I may not be the best to other people, but I don't give a fuck about being the best to other people. I want to be the best. I'm the best to a lot of motherfuckers. And to me, I know I'm the best as far as the art form is concerned. You know what I mean? Clyde Drexler is one of the greatest basketball players ever. One of the. But we know Michael Jordan is Michael Jordan. is Kobe Bryant. But they all played the game dope as fuck. You know, I actually interviewed Deion Cole. Just recently. One of the best who I started. One of the best. By the way, as well. Me and Dion practically started the same day in, at All Jokes Aside in Chicago. Amateurs. Okay. And actually, you know, just as a side note, uh, Dion is now a regular guest on Vlad TV as well. He is, and that he'd be you're like, gonna that. See, you're going to see him every few months. I'm going to do Dion. Yo, what's up, Vlad? How you doing, man? What's good? Dion Cole, <laughs> what's up? Dion, Dion is fantastic, man. Dion is one yep. of the dopest. Most abstract thinking, different comedians. He's a bad motherfucker. He's been doing it a long time. And his yep. whole success makes total sense. All of his success. Well, you know, we talked about the uh, the uh, Steve Harvey monkey routine. For four million, I'll be all I remember the motherfucking this. monkey you can stand. I actually seen I this. Black people are oh, really? so embarrassed yeah, seen him by do my this motherfucking joke live. performance. Oh, so he be did it a bunch of times. Going, Look yeah. at this big yeah. lip, son of a bitch. You ain't got to act like that much of a motherfucking monkey. Oh, yeah. I remember that. But that's old. And then he was just making a joke about shit, the money that they pay. If they pay him 20 million, he'll be the best monkey on this planet Earth. And he'll do this and do that or whatever. He said 4 million. For four million, which he's yeah. gotten way more than. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Then. It's an old, 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 old joke. 
Like, it's an old joke. And back then, it was hilarious. It was hilarious. I get it. I get you know, it. now, in retrospect, when you look at where Steve is today and whatever else, yeah, it looks crazy. But at the time, it was funny. And he actually defended no, Steve no, doing and that. And it makes sense that he did because I totally get what Steve was doing. Because he goes, shit, for a million dollars, I'll be a monkey motherfucker. Boy, got that. It's a, it's a joke. I get it. Because he was just talking about, you know how much money that is? Fuck that. And, and, and Steve is talking from a perspective where he hasn't gotten that money yet. You know, and Steve was doing well. Steve is, first of all, let me not get it twisted. Steve was a fucking beast. He was one of the baddest dudes in the black comedy circuit. I used to see him as an amateur. I would see Steve as an amateur uh, uh, in Chicago. That motherfucker, would, the, the room would be in shambles. That's real talk. No joke, it's real talk. But had a problem with that 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 Monique interview. Had a big problem with that. You know, Monique is a beast, man. Fuck that, she makes me laugh. Monique is is fantastic. She's a friend of mine. I know we've been coming down hard on Monique, which I think is kind of fucked up in a way, because it's like she's she's part of our community, man. And as a black woman comedian, which a lot of black women comics do not get a lot of respect. White women comics get respect all around. And half of them, they don't even be that funny. Half of them be horrible. And there's a there's black women comedians that are murdering shit right now. Yamanika, who you should know about. Marie, Marina Franklin. There's Aaron Jackson. There's Pat Brown. There's a lot of great black women comedians. I can't name them all, but they're fantastic. And they don't get any light. And then so when that, when Monique did her little, you know, I thought when she came out, was talking about the Netflix thing, there were some things I agree with, some things I disagree with. That's fine. But as a but, but as a performer and a business person, I understood her gripe. But I like I said, the way she came out, I was like, well, maybe it should have been a little different. But sometimes we don't know. We make okay, she made a little mistake. Why are we fucking smashing on Monique so hard like that, though? Like, okay, we get it. Do you deep down hate Monique or something? Like, all right. You know, I'm just like, and then she gets on Steve Harvey's show, right? And all of a sudden, he gets, on, you're on her show. Let her talk. She goes, what about integrity, Steve? What about, he goes, I'm not going to let my family crumble because, what do you mean let your family? She said, what about integrity? Uh, we black out here. We black out here. We black. This ain't the white man game. This ain't the black man game. Bullshit. It is the white man's game, dude. It's the white man's game. Are you fuck? I guarantee you, if it was the black man's game, really, BET would be at another level. TV One would be at another level. We'd have as many black stations as uh, TV stations as there are white stations. Please. It is the white man's game. You got to play in it. Fine. Because white men... Created Hollywood, a, a, a group of Jewish cats, be a mayor, Metro, um, Goldwyn, all those cats. There's a documentary on. They created it. Fine, but don't say it's not a black man. Now that you have all this money in the world, now you're fucking neutral. Now, I this is the only thing I hate is when, and people ask me if I if if you're making millions of dollars, are you gonna forget about being black? Fuck no, because they're not gonna forget. <laughs> they're not gonna forget that you're black. You think because. When you're making people money, yeah. But first of all, there's nothing wrong with remembering that you're black. There's nothing wrong with it. It's amazing. But don't be telling people and acting like you're that delusional where you don't know this is not the black man's, it's not the white man game, this is the money game. No, it's the white man's game and it's the money game. Are you out of your fucking mind? Yes, it is the money game and it is the white man's game. We, you know, don't, don't, that, that, that statement bothered me. I was like, no. And I'm not, this is not a knock to Steve, but I go, come on. Dude, are you serious? Because if it was the black, if it wasn't the money game, and if it wasn't the white man's game, everybody, there would be a whole bunch of, of black people hosting shows. Steve, you host like 80 of them because they think only one black person should be allowed in. Of course it's a race game. Huh? They let one Negro in at a time. Like a lot of different comedians should be should should be famous and get, but they let one at a time. And that's you can see the pattern. Which is, it's nothing wrong with someone's hustle. And you know what? how it fucks us up? When they have one person famous at a time, everybody compares you to that one person. And so now you start having resentment for that one black person, which is not fair to them. 
They pit us against each other in this business. They do that shit on purpose. They always do that shit on purpose. You should be able to have your own lane, have your own money, have your own success. You know, and so when he when when Monique got on that show, he talked over her, didn't let her talk, made her look like she was wrong. He said, you got to go a different way on how you do this. Yeah, but that conversation could have been done on the fucking side, not on his show, bro. You could have talked about that shit by yourself. He goes, oh, I, I called her. Yeah, do it on the phone, man. Not on your show, dude. Like, I just I just disagree with that whole thing. And then when they showed the monkey thing. It looked bad, but I know that joke was totally separate. But it didn't look good that he actually, it was almost like a manifestation of what he would do if he got a lot of money. It was weird. You know, it was fucked up. It was almost like when they did Drake with the blackface, when Pusha T showed Drake with the blackface. It was like, Ugh. I'm just saying, I hope I made sense on that one. You know? That's what it is. It is what, what it, is. it is, man. It is what it is. Well, Godfrey, man, always a pleasure. Always. Always love when you come over here to talk shit. I love when you bring me up to talk shit because I get worried when you take too long. But <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Instagram, guys. Comedian Godfrey. Eh. That's what it is. Peace.